Yeah, for my 999th video, I want to go over a couple things with uh, the Second Amendment and defense and things like that. Now, back in the 1800s, this was considered more or less the assault rifle of the day. Didn't have a scope, but this one does. This is actually not a 30-30. This is a 357 Magnum, just like you have in the pistol. And a lot of things that back in the day was very popular to have the same ammunition for the rifle and the pistol because you didn't have to carry two types of ammunition. Now this thing, you know, loads fast. This is a, uh, it actually will load very quickly because it's a fast shooting repeater. So this was considered the assault rifle of the day back in the 1800s. They didn't limit it to the stuff that George Washington had. This is the most modern technology. Now I want to talk about something else about what it cost in the military to train somebody and what happens when they die. Big bucks. Actually, if there was a military catastrophe in the United States and you had, you know, 100,000 troops die, just the SGLI cost behind, but of that, $400,000 times 100,000. You're talking billions just in that alone. The life insurance, the servicemen's group, group life insurance would go broke or they'd have to print money like crazy. We'd probably have rampant inflation because that money would actually get into the system. I'm looking at it in a cold, hard monetary standpoint and driving up to a certain point because if we were actually, we actually did have an honest to goodness, perfect, saintly military that would never go against the American people, even if they were told to by the elite elitist uh, if there was a problem in our defense of our nation it could very easily drive up such a cost to drive to make the American government go broke in the case of an American individual having arms it cost nothing it cost nothing actually um, you know when we figure the cost of training a soldier marine airman or Navy Navy personnel of all the costs that's involved in training them, it's, you know, you add that up in some years of experience, plus the group, servicemen's group life insurance, you're talking like a million dollars easily, easily. Not including equipment, not including transportation, not including logistics and everything else like that. So, you know, if there's a, a major catastrophe where there's a lot of loss of life in the military, we have no defense actually American individuals are the defense and it's far more efficient. But I also want to point out this issue. The Bill of Rights is actually under attack by enemies foreign and domestic. Similarly, those types of people that come to attack you, you always have the right to preserve yourself with any type of weapon you need. This would be an assault rifle of the day, you know, a lever action. And, uh, you know, it's got in the psyche of the American mind as associated with, you know, what won the West and what won the United States and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, um, any person, even in the government, are couldn't, are, are um, covered by life insurance, which is $400,000. Cost-wise, they couldn't do what they say they could do. They couldn't. Not if you fought back. They couldn't do it. It's impossible. Cost-wise... It's 110% impossible. If you had a Nazi Gestapo run by Feinstein or somebody or Chuck Schumer or Boxer or Hillary Clinton or whatever the hell it is, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it if you actually fought back. They couldn't do it. Now, the reason is because it's too cost prohibitive to them. They're going to try to do it through monetary means. They're trying to try to, like, nail you with psychiatric drugs deny your rights in different ways with denying permits because you're on some type of medicine or something like that. There's going to be various ways they're going to try to do this through monetary means. But similarly, you could do that right back to them very easily. Now, uh, I'm going to actually point out something else. The lowly 22 rifle, now I know they have like the, you know, the 1022 is very popular. But you can even use the Marlin tube feed, which has like, you know, the tube feed just like this, has a tube where you put drop the rounds in it, doesn't even have a disconnect magazine. That could be an extremely effective weapon. So if it really comes down to it, say for instance we're invaded or something by, you know, a foreign government, 1022 or a 22 or something, even these lever action Marlin would work fantastic for defense. And when you're considering that you know, there's probably hundreds of millions of firearms in this nation. Uh, 
forget about it. It would never happen. So the New World Order does have a problem, and any traitors to the Bill of Rights have a problem, too. They have a major problem. So I want to point this out because, you know, they could try to make it expensive for us. We can make it expensive for them. And the only real defense of the nation actually rests with the individual gun owner. Because, like I said, if there was 100,000 military personnel that perished in some type of catastrophic event that happened overseas, well, the cost to the government, the cost to the SGLI, life insurance, the cost to, you know, just equipment, would be catastrophic and you just couldn't replace those people. So, the actual defense of the nation actually does rest with individuals, whether you believe it or not. And the people that are actually trying to take away our guns are enemies. There are enemies. And the cost can be driven right back to them. No problem at all. No problem at all. Just takes the will to do so. And that's the main thing. You have to have the will to do so.